Dear friends in Christ, I said we're going to consider some messages from Luke. Some of these may be read by uh, one of our lay leader, one of your lay leaders. Some of them led by me in the next couple of months. But we're going to take a look at you know Jesus as he's presented in the in the Gospel of Luke. First, seeing how uh, he meets death, how he confronts death. We read from Luke chapter 7. And soon afterward, Jesus went to a town called Nain. And his disciples and a large crowd went along with him. As he approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the town was with her. And when the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her, and he said, Don't cry. And then he went up and touched the bier they were carrying him on, and the bearer stood still. He said, young man, I say to you, get up. And the dead man sat up and began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. They were all filled with awe and praise God. A great prophet has appeared among us, they said. God has come to help his people. And this news about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding country. This was a very emotional scene in this text. A widow's only son being carried out uh, to a cemetery with a large crowd of sympathizers going along with her. Now, there are aspects of the scene that make it particularly poignant. I mean, the fact that this was a young man, he was, uh, and that his mother, his only child, and she was a widow, so she's going to be completely alone. But, in fact, all deaths are emotionally charged to, to some extent. Um, now, we can correctly argue that when a believer who is already well, you know, well advanced in years uh, or is, is suffering dies, we say he, he's gone to a better place or she's gone to a better place, which is definitely true. And yet, when that person dies, they leave a, a, a gap, a hole in the life of those that are around them a mourning spouse who has lived with this person uh, you know, for many, many years, children who uh, adored, maybe even depended on this person, friends. Uh, there is just, there will be sadness. It will be emotional. Uh, you know, when we get reports back from wars like in Ukraine or from some natural disaster, do you look for the count? Oh, how many people got injured? How many people came back maimed? No, the number that is most interesting always is how many people died. And the bigger that number, the more emotional the situation is. How many people died? And even on an individual level, if you, someone, someone close to you is in, a, let's say, a serious car accident, it's so much better if they come back maimed and crippled than if we hear the report they died in the accident that's you know, death is, is something like that death is feared death is uh, <coughs> the worst that can happen you know with an accident or whatever they died oh terrible because you know god did not create us human beings to die he created a body breathed into the nostrils, the breath of life, giving that body a soul, giving it life, and that's the way it was supposed to be. Uh, but death rips that body and that soul apart, at least until the day of judgment. So, we do remember that <coughs> uh, it causes suffering for those who are left behind. You know, Loved ones who die in the Lord, of course, they go to a, 
you know, they're, they're going in joy, but there's sorrow for those left behind, as in the case of this uh, poor woman. But then Jesus enters the picture. In fact, we have two crowds coming together. There was the crowd coming with that beer on which they were carrying the, uh, that dead young man, the, the, son, the only son of that widow. Um, it wasn't a coffin. It was usually just the body wrapped in claws, carried on a, a type of a stretcher, coming out from the city with a whole crowd of people mourning there. And on the other side is... Jesus coming with his disciples, and there's a whole crowd of people with him. Jesus uh, is coming here, and he meets death. Um, And what we see Jesus do here as he he, uh, confronts death, we can use that as we confront death now. So as we consider this message from Luke, let's consider when Jesus meets death. Usually when you read about a person in the news, in a book or whatever, it's some important person, right? Somebody that's maybe rich or powerful, influential in some way, maybe even an influential TikTok dancer. I guess they're, <laughs> those are a thing, aren't they? <laughs> um, but oh, it's somebody that's somewhere Im- important. Uh, <clears throat> but here we meet a woman. And her dead son, they don't even, aren't even named. They're from a town called Nain. And the only reason we know that name is because it's named in the Bible, because there's nowhere else this city is mentioned in the entire Bible. It has no significance in history. These people have no significance uh, <clears throat> other than this event. But Jesus goes there with his disciples to this insignificant town to meet this woman. Uh, it, it hardly seems coincidence, does it, that Jesus goes to this town exact time when they're carrying out this dead young man. He heads for death. He's going there to confront death. He's purposely going to confront death. Do we do, we do that? No, well, Jesus did. Um, and so he comes to the beer of this young man, Uh, to his mother, who had no other children. Um, And we read, When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her, or he had compassion on her in uh, other translations. Jesus had never met this woman. He didn't know her, but her desperate situation aroused his compassion. She would have no other person to support her. Um, that was, the plight of widows was much different in those days. And her life would be empty because there was no other children in her family. It, it, you know, humanly speaking, she'd have nothing to live for. And Jesus felt compassion for her. Um, you know, Jesus performs his miracles, including this one often uh, to show his power, to show who he was, to, to verify the message he was proclaiming uh, so that people would listen to him. But we often read, as we do here, that there was another factor, and that was his compassion. He genuinely felt sorry for the person that was suffering here. Um, in another situation, he had a friend, uh, Lazarus, who had died. And... <clears throat> What do we read when he gets there and sees his sister, Lazarus' sister, weeping and all the other people weeping? He was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. And later we read that Jesus himself wept in this situation. Death, you know, Jesus had compassion on the people suffering. And death brings that suffering It's the worst. Uh, It rips apart body and soul, as we said. It rips apart families and communities when people die, depending on on someone there. And Jesus is moved when he sees this. You know, God does 
use death to usher us into a new life, a better life, an eternal life. Uh, <clears throat> he even tells his mother here, don't cry. Of course, he's got some special plan now. Uh, <clears throat> and Jesus' heart goes out to her because she has suffered this loss. So we see the truth, first of all, that Jesus shows compassion to those suffering death. Well, he's suffering anything, actually, but death, of course, as we said, is the worst. Jesus shows compassion to those suffering death. Now, what does this mean for us? Jesus doesn't walk the streets of our town anymore. In fact, when he was a uh, visible. He only walked one place at a time. I and mean, when he was in Nain, he wasn't in Jerusalem, he wasn't in Capernaum, he wasn't in Nazareth, he wasn't in, in Nain. Uh, but he was fully human and acting completely as a human, feeling all the things that a human feels, like, including suffering and including, including uh, compassion. Except one different from us, he had no sin. None of his feelings were ever tainted with sin. He is, in, in fact, still human. He still has that human nature, though it's now in an exalted state so that he can be uh, all elver. He can be with us right now here. And he still has compassion on people around him. He has compassion on you, on us, when we are suffering. His heart goes out to us. He gives us his word as a way to, to comfort us um, so the first thing we want to see what this means, remember Jesus' compassion when you suffer. He's there. Now, when we see Jesus' compassion, and we feel that compassion, and we experience it, what's one of the things we want to do? Do we want to reflect that compassion to other people around us? Um, when people suffer, when people suffer death, especially when it's the death of a child, Death of a child is out of order, isn't it? It's, you know, you expect the old people to die and then, and then next and next. But when a child dies, that's out of order. That's not the way it, things should be. And if we are like Jesus or want to be like Jesus, we will be compassionate with those people that are suffering in this way. Um, you know, even in the case of an older person dying, there's still a gap, a hole uh, in somebody's life. And we will express compassion. Expressions of compassion and, and expressions of being willing to help them in their situation will not fill that hole, will not take away the grief by itself, but it will help people bear up under those things that the Lord has let come into their lives. Uh, <clears throat> so another thing we want to do is reflect Jesus' compassion to those who suffer. Now, one of the things we think of, we think of this, this man's death, we think of other people's death, but we can also be drawn to remember Jesus' own death. You know, Jesus' death was traumatic. It was traumatic for his mother. Simeon had said it would be like a sword piercing her soul. Well, isn't that the way a mother feels? And she was a true mother. It was traumatic for his disciples. They didn't fully understand it. They were at loss. It was traumatic for a lot of people. It was traumatic for Jesus. He suffered greatly hanging on that cross. Um, the, the physical suffering, the, the suffering of having his father uh, abandon him. He suffered greatly um, until his soul was ripped from his body and his body was laid to rest in the grave for a time. So when, we, <clears throat> uh, when Jesus meets death, we are invited to remember Jesus' own death, that he died for us, not for himself. Now Jesus had told the woman, don't cry. Now he had a very concrete reason for telling her this because of what he was going to do. Because in just a few moments he would say, young man, I say to you, get up. And he got up. What do you think, how would you feel if you were in a situation like that? These people that had followed this 
bier out toward the, toward the cemetery. They knew he was dead. He was very dead. They had taken care of him, wrapped him up, washed him, whatever they, they did. And here he was, sitting up, talking. Yeah, I guess sometimes in horror movies they have some scenes like that where someone is supposedly dead and all of a sudden he sits up and, ta and talks. And that's a little different situation uh, here. This dead man just sits up and starts talking. And he gets up off the beer and he goes back to be with his mother. This is an amazing, incredible, uh, <coughs> incontrovertible miracle. It's going to be faked or duplicated by anybody. Young man, I say, do you get up? And, and he does. Um, and the response, the people around, they were all filled with awe and praised God. A great prophet has appeared among us, they said. God has come to help his people. And this news about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding country. Now, the, the response of these people was very appropriate, wasn't it? First of all, they ascribed this miracle to God. They praised God for bringing this young man back to life and giving him back to his mother. They conclude that Jesus is a great prophet, maybe even the prophet that was promised uh, because they, they talk about, you know, God has come to help his people, which was the phrase that was kind of used for, for, to describe the Messiah who is coming. They probably didn't have the full understanding of it, but they still ascribe, this is from God. This is a, not an ordinary man. He is a great prophet sent from God. Um, and <clears throat> they would probably, you know, learn more about him later. Now, in fact, a large number of these people that were following Jesus at this time would turn away from him. When they found out he was just a spiritual savior, saving them from their sins, saving them from eternal death, they did not all of them wanted that. A lot of them left because they were looking for something more physical. A bread king, for example. Uh, but... <clears throat> But for many of the people that were there that day, and I would think the disciples which were there, this event would sear itself into their hearts. I mean, if you witnessed a scene like this, you'd remember it, wouldn't you? You'd remember it for the rest of your life. It would affect your life. It would affect how you look at Jesus. And I'm sure that happened for a lot of the people that, that witnessed this here. Um, it led these people to fear God. To, to recognize God is the one doing these things. They had the power over death. Um, and then it led them to spread the news. They, they, the news about Jesus spread through the whole community. Now, for these people that continue to follow Jesus, a lot of this would come together, uh, perhaps a few years, a couple of years later, when they would see Jesus himself rise from the dead. He would be executed, and then he would rise from the dead. But they would see, this is different. The, this young man in Nain, he was raised from the dead to continue his ordinary life until one day he would die again, um, perhaps at a more appropriate age. But Jesus, when he rose from the dead... He rose with a glorified body, never to die again. He rose victorious over death, rose from the death that he didn't deserve so that he could give life to us and to everyone who believes in him. Uh, <clears throat> so the second truth we want to learn today is that Jesus demonstrates power over death, both here in Nain and in his own resurrection. Now, what does this mean for us? At many funerals, the person who passed is remembered fondly. Tears often flow. Um, I was at a 
You know, it, it depends on the culture. I was at a funeral not a couple years ago, and I was, well, that's been over a year anyway, where there were a lot of tears flowing because this person was a beloved mother and a sister and wife and, uh, you know, died before her time seemingly. Uh, that's appropriate. Jesus himself wept when Lazarus died. Um, but when we have a funeral, the more appropriate message, the one that we really need is what Jesus speaks here to this woman. Don't cry. We're there to wipe away tears, not to make tears. Because Jesus meets death and conquers death. He has power over death. Um, he raised this young man from the dead. But more important, he will raise all of us from the dead on the last day and give all of us who believe in him eternal life. A life that goes on forever and it will be un, um, unmitigated by any kind of, of sin or death anymore. Um, and we can believe that this day will happen because we see Jesus' power over death here in this situation. So first thing is we say, remember Jesus will raise you to life. When you read about this man being raised from the dead, remember, you will die one day but he will raise you back to life. Now, as we said, you know, this woman was crying. We often cry in this life, even when there's no death around. There is a lot of suffering in this world, brought on, all brought on by sin, in its various forms and shapes. Um, <clears throat> but our Savior is with us. Jesus is with us. He has compassion on us in all of our suffering situations. Uh, <clears throat> but like him, he's not going to just take us out of this world because he has work for us to do. Jesus had work to do. He suffered on this world even before he got to the cross. He was persecuted a lot. He didn't have anything, but he had work to do. Work of spreading the word that he is the Savior so that people can be saved for eternity. We have work to do too. Um, he was going to leave us in the suffering world for a while. We don't know for sure how long, but we have work to do. And one of the first things we can do is think about those people that were responding to this miracle here and, and imitate what they did. First thing that says they, they praise God because the good thing that happened there, and there are good things that happened to this, comes from God. So praise God when you get blessings, when the good things happen to you, when you even remember your own uh, you know, salvation. Praise God. And praising, by the way, is something you do that people, other people hear so that other people can hear. Yeah, we have a great God. I have a great God who, who saved me. Uh, <clears throat> and then uh, talk about this great prophet he has sent. Jesus, who is more than a prophet, of course. He's a king, he's a priest, he's the Savior. Talk about him. That's what they did. Um, and, and, of course, the other thing is then they went and talked about this to, to other people. This message about praising God, about Jesus being a great prophet, about him having power over death, that needs to be spread to all the people uh, around Jackson, Jacksonville. I once lived in Jackson, with, uh, Michigan, so I get it confused. But <laughs> we, we need to spread this word. This is a great message. Um, and, you know, the more we get caught up in, uh, first of all, showing compassion to other people, and the more we get caught up in praising God and telling how great things are, our own sufferings will kind of go into the background as we think about those, those good things. Um, so what does this mean to us? Do the work Jesus gives us while we wait. People in this world are afraid of death. Death is dramatic. 
They try to avoid death at any cost. I mean, you know, some people, they, uh, they claim that just before they die or at, when they die, they're going to have their bodies frozen so that they can be brought back to life and all sorts of things to do to try to, to put off death. Jesus goes to meet death. He goes to confront death. Uh, <clears throat> and he conquers death. There were some awe-inspiring and comforting things that Jesus did when he confronted death for this widow in particular. So he had compassion on her. So as Jesus confronts death, see his compassion. And then when we see that he raised him from the dead, and remember that he will raise us from the dead, see his power. Amen.